Hello and welcome to the shop. My name is Dave. In this video, we're going to be working with Pearson Work Holdings Vacuum Chuck. We're going to utilize their top plate system to make a fun little project that I think you'll enjoy. And stick around to the end. I'm going to do a review and share some of the mistakes that I made and some of the insights that I discovered. That way, hopefully in the future, it could help you if you use a system like this. So let's get going. All right, so let's get started with the layout of this candy tray. You would think I would have better things to do than make candy trays, but thought this would be fun. That is the worst circle and sketch I've ever seen in my life. That's okay. All right, it's a good thing I have CAD. All right, here is the fixture that I've got planned out for these plates here. Um, one of the advantages we're going to have by doing it this way is I can walk around the part um, with an end mill, and I can access half of its thickness all the way around, all of the top side, and I have full support underneath the material. So it's held down tightly and it's rigid, um, which is going to allow me to machine it a little bit more aggressively than I would if I was holding it in a vise, because I would have to hold it so delicately, which I did try two, two different times, and I was able to make a part, but the part was fairly narrow, but I had to just barely, barely tighten the vise and just cross my fingers that it didn't lift. And the other issue is at the bottom of the pockets, it's pretty thin, and there's a really good chance that you're going to get chatter in that area. And so doing it this way, the part is flat and supported on the bottom side where it's thin. So it should reduce or completely eliminate the chances of chatter. So I should get a nice surface finish. And it allows me to put the part up against a positive stop for both first and second operation. And I can just do one part after the other, after the other, after the other. If I were to do this on, say, a flat table or some sort of flat fixture plate with clamps that come from the top and actually push down on the part, I would have to machine a small section, unclamp, reclamp after it's machined, and then machine the next section and do this over and over and over for multiple parts. And I wasn't going to have any of that. So I wanted something I could throw in there, hit a stop, and hit the green button and machine each operation and then pull it out and it's done. And so this is kind of what I came up with. These little adjustable kind of work stops. I call them clamps, but they're really not clamping anything. They're just uh, pushed up against the material to to make it to where it's positively located so it so it can be supported during machining um, so that it doesn't overcome 
the vacuum table, although the vacuum table is pulling it down really hard, there's just no doubt that machining plunging this material that it's not going to shift in some way. So uh, this should lock it in place and give me pretty good results. Let's get to making this fixture. We'll start by making the clamps. This is 4140 heat treated material, bar stock already ground, which is really nice to work with. It's like watching a campfire. It's beautiful. Okay, now they're all cleaned up. Let's get to making these clamps. First operation. We'll start with the pockets. Finish the lengths, the step. Now let's break the corners. Man, I wish you would machine this fast in real life. All right, let's do one after the other. This first operation. Now let's do the bottom side. Finish the end. Deburr it. Wham bam. Piece of cake. Let's see how we did. Nice. Now will they work? Let's polish the edge that we didn't deeper with the machine tool. So it'll be nice and smooth. I like it. Boom. That's done. Now let's work on the top plate. Sweep it in. Find the edge or the corner for the program. Losing some hair there. This smart vac vacuum system was so easy to set up. Really nice. All right, so we're gonna kiss the face of this so that it's nice and true. I really like using the small end mills for facing. It takes a lot longer, but you get like no chatter and it's so smooth and it looks really good. So I tend to do that. Now this is the air hole. During the machining process, I don't drill all the way through because I don't want to drill into my actual vacuum chuck. So I just leave a little bit of meat there and then finish it off by hand with the drill bit. And this is where the vacuum is actually going to be pulling the vacuum from. All it took is one little tiny hole for all the different parts. We'll get it cleaned up, put the pins in. All right. So now that we got that in, we're going to edge fine so we can find the um, corner of our work stops. And then let's put in the gasket for the first part. And I already pre-cut this to length. Pulled it out, now I'm putting it back in. Give a little tug. Dude, amazing. Almost tempted to not even use clamps, but too scared for that. Look at that. Bam. Pulls it down hard. All right. Let's push our work stops up against the material so it's locked in place. And let's get going. We'll walk around it first. Do the profile. And then we finish the face. Now for op two on the finish side. And there's some movie magic. I wish it went that fast, but it didn't. Let's see how we did. Mmm, I like it. Sweet. 
got these nifty little rubber adhesive bump stops from McMaster Car, and they're grippy. Got it all cleaned up. She's looking good. She's almost ready for some candy. All right, well, let's talk about this vacuum chuck. First of all, the packaging was amazing, and I'm a real nut for that kind of stuff. It was so, so nice. The attention to detail was phenomenal. It's given me a lot of good ideas um, for my own products to help improve my quality. Uh, so shout out to Pearson. Your guys' stuff is excellent. Um, the fit and finish on every component in this kit was great. It was super simple to set up. Um, instructions were good and just can't be any happier about the quality of the product. Now, as far as how well it works, man, I couldn't find one thing about it that I didn't like. It was, it was unbelievably strong. I couldn't, couldn't believe how well it held the parts down. Um, and you know, building this fixture, uh, with this top plate, you know, I was a little unsure how well it was going to work. Um, obviously I knew I couldn't do some heavy, heavy machining, but I wanted to kind of see how I could, you know, push the limits a little bit. And I had, I had a pretty good idea that I, uh, that it would work what I needed to do. And it did turn out to work good. There was definitely some things that I would have done differently next time. And I'm going to share those with you. Um, but this top plate fixture was such a nice product. Um, the, the only downside for my setup was that they only offer this in a three eighths plate. And, you know, I decided to build these adjustable work stops um, to kind of ca to capture the material uh, during machining, and so I threaded them to clamp them down. And the three eighths material is just not enough material. You know, the the holes are really uh, it's really easy to actually break through, which I did a couple times. Um, and so next time, if I was to do the same type of setup, I would probably just machine my own top plate out of three quarter or. Uh, encourage Pearson to uh, make a three-quarter inch top plate I'd be a buyer uh, but but the price point of all of this was fantastic the top plate is really really nice especially if you're just going to be doing um, you know a single sheet of um, material and you're not putting any kind of threaded clamps down the 3 8 material will work just fine and I will be purchasing more of these for some other products that um, now I know I can do on this on this tool um, so this whole setup that I did with a, the, re, the removable uh, work stops and the positive stops of dowel pins, um, it all functioned great. It worked good. Some of the things I would have done differently now that I've actually machined it is these, these dowel pins, although these are super nice to put in and real easy, um, I probably, once I had a thicker base plate or a thicker top plate, I would probably actually machine the top down and create a ledge because what happens what happened when I would do the heavier machining operation plunging these pockets there is a significant amount of pressure on these plates and it would push up against these pins and create a small little witness mark on my part which I wasn't too worried about because it was really really light um, and the other thing was these clamps the the shape of them and the the design of them worked really well for what I needed it for. It allowed me to walk around the part with these reliefs right here for both the first operation and the second operation. Um, but the original purpose for this tooling fixture was a job that I had to do for a customer with a, a very similar part and similar features. And, you know, after 10 to 12 parts, the this little clamp starts to wear out. I mean, this was 4140. Uh, heat treated but the socket head cap screws start to leave indentions on it and every time you tighten it down it has a tendency to fall back into its little groove and so if I were to make these again I'd make them quite a bit beefier and add some hardened washers to prevent that from happening but other than that they worked great um, as you can see I did I had a couple different uh, profile patterns for different size parts and the gaskets work so good. Um, they work repeatedly. I've taken them out several times, put them back in, and they sealed great every time. It's it's pretty it's pretty wild how how well this pulls the part down. I had some. This is this one is 316 
uh, stainless steel bar material. And it was relatively stable, but some other parts that I made were out of 3 8 plasma cut plate. And they had all kinds of stress in them. And this thing, after you would machine it, it would actually hold that stress down and keep it flat. And then once you released it, you would see it spring up. So, I mean, that's how well it was pulling it down. Um, and so, I've got nothing but good to say about it. Uh, if you were going to do something like this again, you know, think about maybe going with a thicker plate. Um, but if this is in your wheelhouse and it's something you think you might need, do not hesitate. Um, it's a fine product and I'd highly recommend it. Hey, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to the next one. If you really like this video, would you please hit a uh, thumbs up for me? Hit the subscribe button so you can get the next videos and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.